Welcome to this video on thermal noise. In this video we'll introduce the concept and go through a simple example in which we will compute the power generated by thermal noise in the resistor. Okay. The source of thermal noise is essentially the following. Suppose that I have a resistor the wires or leads into the resistor are metal. Inside the resistor I have uh, typically carbon or some other resistive material. And inside this resistor, I, in order for it to conduct, I have free electrons. Okay, that means these electrons are able to move around. Now, unless you have something chilled to absolute zero, which is really hard to do, these particles, these electrons, will not just sit still. In fact, they'll be jiggling. So they jiggle around and uh, they move around because, again, unless something is at absolute zero, it's jiggling around. And so this um, motion of these charged particles, and in particular the variation that you get because they're moving randomly, creates fluctuation in the density of electrons, which in turn creates fluctuation in the voltage across the resistor. And this fluctuation in voltage across the resistor shows up as thermal noise. Okay. So, let's see if we can't characterize thermal noise a little bit. It turns out that the power spectral density of thermal noise is very flat out to frequencies that are typically much larger than you see being used in electrical systems. So, uh, this is the power spectral density and uh, Typically, it's flat out to 80 gigahertz or more. Now, where it's flat out to does depend on temperature. The higher the temperature, um, if I understand correctly, the higher the temperature is, then the lower the frequency at which it stays flat. So, it turns out that this power spectral density has value for K T R, where K is Boltzmann's constant, and T is the temperature of the resistor in degrees Kelvin. R is the resistance of the resistor. Okay, uh, for those of you that are uh, too, too tired to Google it. Boltzmann's constant is approximately 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23rd joules per degree Kelvin. Okay, and um, this, uh, uh, th this formula was actually derived, at least uh, one person who derived it was Nyquist. Uh, so sometimes you'll see uh, thermal noise called Nyquist-Johnson noise. Um, so if I have a bandwidth that my uh, system bandwidth above which my system is going to filter uh, attenuate um, uh, signals, so suppose I have a system bandwidth of B, then the power the noise power in this um, uh, between 0 and B will be given by this. And the term, uh, the way you often see this written is this is average squared uh, voltage. So this will be 4 K T R B. And uh, that basically gives you then the average squared voltage, or the RMS voltage, 
or I'm sorry, the RMS voltage squared of the thermal noise power. To do an example, let's suppose that we have the following values. Let's suppose that T, our temperature, is 25 degrees Celsius, which is nominally room temperature. In degrees Kelvin, this is fairly close to 298 degrees. Uh, Kelvin is uh, 273 degrees higher than Celsius, approximately. Let's suppose that I have a, a 1 K ohm resistor, and let's suppose my system has a bandwidth of 1 megahertz. This is a bandwidth that you might get, for example, if you're using uh, a typical op amp. Uh, a lot of op amps have uh, effective bandwidths of about a megahertz. Okay, if I plug these numbers into the formula, I get V n bar squared is equal to 4 times K times T, which is 298 degrees Kelvin, times R, which is 1 K ohm, times B, which is 1 megahertz, and when I compute this, and it turns out you can actually type this whole expression into Google, Google understands that K is Boltzmann, Boltzmann's constant, and it'll actually compute it all for you. You get 1.65 times 10 to the minus 11th volt squared. Now you need to make sure that you remember 1 K ohm is 1,000 ohms, and 1 megahertz is a million hertz. My experience has been that until you get used to doing these sorts of things, um, you can get yourself in some real trouble by uh, just calling this one, either of these one. So this means that the RMS voltage, V sub n, will be the square root of this guy. And when you compute that, that turns out to be 4.06 times 10 to the minus 6 volts, which I can also write as 4.06 microvolts. So it turns out that the thermal noise here is fairly small. This is quite a small um, RMS value for the noise voltage. But in some applications, this may actually be significant. If the voltage, your signal voltage that you're interested in is only a few millivolts, then having uh, a noise voltage of a few microvolts may actually create enough inaccuracy that you can't measure what you'd like to. So this concludes this video, which again was a short introduction to thermal noise. Thank you for watching.